I'm Shivani Gupta and welcome to the Ask Shivani Podcast. I believe that one of the best presents that you can give yourself is time to be able to sit down and ask yourself some questions. I believe that the quality of the questions that you ask yourself will determine the quality of your life. Welcome to the Ask Shivani podcast. I am so excited to have our guest today. I had the opportunity to meet Natalia Bertikan um, through an entrepreneur's organisation a number of years ago. And this year when I was travelling to Barcelona, which is where she joins us today, we got to meet up um, again and we got to walk through the beautiful city of Barcelona. She is an extraordinary human and the um, bio I'm about to give you is probably not going to do it justice. But she does a lot of work with um, individuals and organisations about energising their life and workplace and has created a business which we'll hear more about called Life by Design and the academy that she set up. She um, talks about more energy and fulfilment and wellbeing without stress. She's into leadership coaching and training. She's currently the EO president of Barcelona. She's also a um, professional uh, certified coach. She's a yoga and breathwork trainer and also a keynote and public speaker. Welcome, Natalia. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you. It's and amazing. I... You go. No, no, no. It was a super, it was super wonderful to have you here in Barcelona and a pleasure to be here and to be at your Oh, podcast. it's so lovely. And with all the things that you've done, uh, Natalia, give us, t- take us through some of your big moments, you know, your big highs and your low lows in all the different things that you've done to get you to where you have got to today. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the journey was long. Uh, I do come originally from Moscow, from 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 Russia and back in the days in the 90s going from Soviet Union post Soviet Union to California was a big big thing for me as a as a teenager at 16 I I got to live with American host families and for me that was a a life-changing experience and it seemed like the world has opened up and the sky was no longer the limit as it's uh, as it's been ever since um what else? Then I moved to Europe. And again, every single thing, every single change I had was, was challenging, but at the same time, so enriching. And I'm very much grateful for that. And a lot has happened in the last 40 plus years now. And um, everything is just beautiful. It's, it's like uh, life gives you wonderful lessons, wonderful opportunities, challenges, and with all that, um, we grow and we learn and we embrace what comes and we become uh, different humans than we were and um, are able to give back everything that we learn. So for me, that's um, it's a beautiful journey. Yeah, wow. Um, that's incredible. And so you know, with everything that's happening, you and I were talking about, um, you know, what's happening around the world, but also the work that you're doing. Um, So when when different challenges come your way, whether it's in the work and your business space, or in your personal life, um, how do you go about dealing with it? Some people have certain rituals, some people have a process. So when things hit you, small, medium or large, like, how do you go about dealing with challenges? Well, I breathe. <laughs> the The most interesting, simple, and yet uh, empowering tool is actually our breath. It's the first thing we do when we're born and the last thing on this world and uh, when we go. And it is something that gives us a lot of presence, clarity, oxygen clearly, and It gives us the possibility to respond rather than react also by time in case of facing challenges it's it's really calming so and I mean in any circumstances whether it is when one is asked the question and you need the time to reflect or something serious is coming and there's a situation and you need to handle it I really love it a couple of deep long breaths and you just regain the power 
and that's beautiful and um and that i i got that not only <clears throat> after becoming a breathwork teacher but in any circumstances it's um it's such an empowering thing although i must say that back in the days it's more common to react and respond really fast and then the body changes its its <clears throat> its chemistry and we're no longer able to respond in a in a nice calm manner so it's it's important to use it in any time during the day several times a day i i really love it it's um the key tool for me actually yeah that's um that's beautiful i've heard that say before um you know your breath is the first thing that you come in with and the last thing that you go out with but we forget that don't we we forget that that point that when there's stress or overwhelm or challenges coming your way to kind of re-go back and connect to it um i started um, starting breath work this year as well um, natalia and i just noticed how quickly it takes me into my body like yoga takes me a little bit longer meditation takes me a little bit longer but breath work takes me there like straight away in terms of what you're trying to do. And yeah. so with all the amazing things that you've done, when you look to the future, and for some people the future is, you know, the next month and getting to Christmas. The others it's, um, you know, looking into next year. Um, and for some people it's longer, it's a five or a 10-year vision. So when you look in, into whatever that future time frame is for you, what are some of your future aspirations? What are the things you're wanting to do? What are you wanting to see in the world? Tell us a little bit about that. Thank you for the question. Well, the future starts today, really. And it's about everything. It's about what we do in every single moment. And being present is extremely important and extremely valuable, not only for ourselves, but the people around us and the world around us. So for me, as part of that, I believe, and what's important as part of that aspiration is bringing more consciousness to the world. Uh, to to practice being in the moment to be to be present to be in that state of joy flow uh, unconditional love really practicing that um, all of these principles of being aware and uh, being acceptant and non-judgmental for ourselves as it's extremely heavy otherwise and for people around us and in that um in that matter bringing consciousness to two people two leaders and entrepreneurs i work with because that's that's the people that i work with the people that have extremely um a lot of pressure uh, that sense of overwhelm that's that's constant in their in the lives they're managing their businesses their lives their families and it's a lot it's heavy and not only they tend to forget to breathe sometimes but really being present in that moment and being cautious being conscious leaders and leading from a different energy resonance where it's not about pressure and stress and overwhelm but it's about embracing being the fact that they are the creator of their lives and their experiences and uh, that's the kind of place where uh, they lead from they not only enjoying their life and showing up as great conscious leaders and beautiful humans but also they're experiencing the world and that um, what comes to them in a different way without the stress with more creativity with more flow and more effortless ease and for me that's the kind of uh, power I would love to bring more to the world to people and to their organizations so that can increase not only performance but also well-being and health yeah that is such amazing work that you're doing and you know I, I think just having all the business expertise that you have too um, I think you and I were talking about Michael Singer when we were walking around Barcelona together and I think to have that background of business and that um, that spiritual uh, experience to then be able to share that with leaders to become more conscious is so much more powerful than one or the other it's almost like you've got the the combination of that to be able to help leaders and people around the world become more conscious so just extraordinary in terms of some of the stuff that you do. Um, I am going to rotate back to some of your work and how people find you later. 
But tell us a little bit about, you do so much work for other people, helping them be conscious. Tell us about some of the things that you do for your own wellness, like whether it's mental or emotional or physical wellness, spiritual wellness. What are some of the practices that you have? Some might be daily or monthly or even a yearly thing. Tell us about some of the things that you do to manage your own wellness. Thank you. Well, like I mentioned, the breath. The first thing I do in the morning is have a glass of water. And right now it's it's seven in the morning. So that's the most important for me. The water, the tea, I, I do have a yoga practice every day. And how it started actually before becoming a yoga trainer, uh, during the COVID times, I actually started practicing yoga let's say 15 minutes a day, and it was a consistent exercise. So I advise everybody that thinks, well, so let's start something, but well, one hour is way too big, whether it's a gym or the practice of yoga or meditation, start something with something small, five, 15 minutes, but consistently every day. And if you miss a day, that's also fine. As long as you continue without that judgment, oh, I haven't done it, so I shouldn't have shouldn't continue so I started with 15 minutes and then it went into going into a professional yoga practice and now it can be an hour it can be 30 minutes really depending on what your day allows so um, yoga meditation again the same thing whether it's five minutes or an hour I have I also sometimes use apps with um, I like the Chopra app as it gives quite nice content and every day it can be on something different that is important to you in the moment so yesterday was about enlightenment for example um, being the light and sharing the light and it it gives that space again to con reconnect with self and to breathe and speaking of breathing it connects with everything whether it's a yoga practice a meditation practice and anything um a very good tool then um what i do is also the reading so i take the book and right now is actually about enlightenment and meditation that uh, i've been uh, reading and actually it's several books at the same time so it's good to choose uh, what would like to what would you like to do um to to read on in in this period of time depending where the the mind is or the the state is uh, I also started booking some time for writing my own book. So since yesterday, I booked that time every day to continue with the writing. Same as yoga. What helps? Um, because a lot of people say, well, I don't find the time for myself. There's a lot to do. There's business, there's family, etc. But I get overwhelmed. I don't know when to put my schedule to uh, go for a walk or to go to the gym to have my me time. So it's it's useful to actually book the time for self in the agenda. So that time I always have for myself booked on every day and it's recurring. Um, things like that. And then uh, taking long walks. I have a beautiful dog and I live in front of the beach uh, intentionally. So I take long walks, uh, fresh air, nature, very important. Uh, and having small breaks, um, small breaks to recharge, to rest, to reconnect with self, connect to that intuition, uh, very important, which is not something I did back in the days when I was running my chocolate factory in Belgium. That's what uh, also got me a little off. I was constantly running in that, uh, like an autopilot no time to stop, no time for self, no time for reflection. I, I thought I was always giving the time to others and get things done and solving problems and challenges. But actually, it took me away from that real space of clarity and reconnection and alignment with myself. Um, so it's very important to, to have time for self, um, even the little bits, um, very important. What that's, do you do? That's amazing. Like that's such a great, great practice. Um, um, I, I, I love the fact that you talked about a range then, Natalia, because like people go, oh, that sounds like a lot, right? Sometimes listeners that are speaking to it and listening to this and they go, that sounds like a lot. But I love the fact that you gave the range. Look, it could be from five minutes and it could be up to an hour. Um, my practice to answer your questions always, um, I have to do minimum of 10, 10, 10. And 
This comes from the wonderful rot of Warren Rustang. I remember listening to his um, listening to him a, a couple of times, and he talks about the importance of ten, ten, ten. So I, I go the minimum I must do is that ten, 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 which is um, <clears throat> I usually start off ten minutes of meditation, ten minutes of reading, and ten minutes of journaling. And I just always link that into that. When I do that, I know that I just have a better day. It's almost like I've unlocked or unleashed or, you know, released some blockages or things that have been sitting in my mind or my body. And when I don't do that, I notice that I get overwhelmed more easily and stressed more easily. Um, and I have not got to a practice as good as yours of doing yoga every day. But over this year, uh, particularly exiting a business and uh, taking a bit of a sabbatical, is I've really got into the practice of getting there about four to five times a week now, which um, I'm really enjoying. And it's such a great practice just to be led and, um, you know, look through and feel through how to connect back to yourself. So that they're kind of my practices. Um, so I try and take a minimum 30 minutes and then ideally 90 minutes, like an hour of yoga and the other 30 minutes to really set myself. And I just have so much of a better day when I do that. That's beautiful. Well done. And Warren yeah. Rustin is an amazing leader. And we did get those practices when we were at uh, one of the EO events on top of Machu Picchu, still, still hearing his speech in my head. And that's what actually pivoted me as well from running my company like crazy to starting to listen to myself first. And, um, and that was a pivotal moment. What I really love also as a practice um, is writing down three to do things per day, not a whole long list, although for some people long lists work, but some people uh, the opposite. Three things, what are the most important things I want to get done? And thinking also in the way of ABC, what is the A plan I have for today? What is the absolute maximum I want to do is the A, the B, what is the B plan to the A plan in case the A plan doesn't work out in case of yoga, for instance, I, if I want to do an hour, fine. If I don't have an hour, 30 minutes would be my B plan. And the C plan, what if the A plan doesn't work? The B plan doesn't work. What I'm still happy with doing the C plan, for example, 15 minutes or going for a walk for half an hour. And I'm still feel happy and achieved that day. And you can apply it to anything that ABC success plan does wonders. I love that. That's such a great tip. Um, for our listeners I love that because it also takes that stress away to go come somehow like I've failed if I haven't done the hour I have failed or if I haven't meditated like I get people going oh my god Shani, I've tried meditating it didn't work and I said yeah but meditating is a little bit like learning how to walk right when you learn how to walk and you fall over you don't then go that's it I'm going to give it up and I'm never going to walk again you still have to keep going back and there's no such thing as a bad meditation I love the B plan. I, you know, sometimes go, okay, Shivani, be happy with 20 minutes if you can't get to that. But I also love that if the B plan doesn't work, have a C plan. Natalie, that's gold. That's a really, really, really yeah. great share. And tell us about, tell us a bit more about the work you do with individuals and businesses. And then tell us also where's the best places for us to find you so that if people want to, that are listening, that want to connect with you, they go, I really like the way this um, amazing woman uh, speaks and I want to find out a bit more about it. So tell us a bit more about that. Your sound when, hello? Yeah, can you hear me now? I can, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. I was just saying, tell us some, a bit more about your work, some of the work that you do with individuals and businesses, but then also tell us about... Um, where people can find you and connect with you? Where's the best places to connect with you? Perfect. So uh, I normally start with a 360 leadership assessment with um, individuals. It's an, a very unique tool and it's considered by Forbes, one of the top three tools to be used in organizations and leaders. And it measures energy, which is quite unique, energy and consciousness. Uh, leadership ability, potential, and all of that. So it really sh shows uh, to people where they are at 
on a good day in terms of how they show up, how they experience, what are their go-to behaviors, and under stress, as we tend to behave and feel quite different under stress. And at the same time, it gives a real 360 view of how are we showing up in terms of uh, our leadership competencies. And by leadership, I mean, I start with self-leadership because if we can't lead ourselves, how can we lead others? So it really gives a 360 view, uh, not only uh, the individual assessing themselves on all of these competencies, but also their family, friends, their direct reports, their peers, um, clients and whatnot. So it's a real 360. So when I experience people that have self-doubts, for instance, that report really shows them that how do other people perceive him? Because sometimes we have a different perception of ourselves versus how the world sees us. So from there on, I take them on the coaching journey and I become more of a their guide on to take them where they want to go and what is standing in between. Because a lot of people are, are facing a lot of limiting beliefs, a lot of fears, you know, all these baggage that we bring with us from our past, from our society, from our childhood, uh, expectations of others and ourselves. And it's quite heavy. And uh, we work through a lot of that. What is influencing their energy, their potential, their power, and how to get to the place of moving from struggle and pain and, and difficulties and, and challenges and frustrations to the place of peace, fulfillment, joy, their total power and potential. And that's a beautiful journey. As they can do it for themselves, they can also do it for their teams and their families. And that's transformational. And because I work holistically with a person, it's not just a business or their leadership skills. You know, we are holistic people one doesn't work uh, in isolation with the other we spoke a lot about health just now the well-being everything is connected so uh, it's not just cognitive work but connecting it down to the body and increasing our abilities uh, to listen to our bodies to to feel to feel better to bring those practices into life that uh, increase our health um, routines and the more well we feel, the more connected we feel, the more, the better we can show up, uh, lead, and just enjoy our life and experiences. Amazing. That's amazing. I, I, um, I know we spoke about that 360. That's just such a great tool and being able to have a look at that. And if people want to find you, Natalia, where's the best place? Is it a website or LinkedIn? What platforms can we find you on if people want to connect you, uh, connect with you? So LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, it's Natalia Verdikian, just my name. And then there is a website, alivebydesign-academy.com. You have all the information there. You can connect, schedule a call, be happy to support and talk anytime. That's incredible. Been such a pleasure having you today, Natalia. Thank you so much for getting up super early in Barcelona and joining us. Thank you so much and look forward to seeing you in Barcelona again or any place around the world. Absolutely. I'm Shivani Gupta and you've been listening to the Ask Shivani podcast where I got to ask some questions. Thank you so much for listening. Please follow Ask Shivani on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. And if you haven't done so, please go to the Apple podcast and subscribe, rate and review this podcast. It would mean a lot. Thank you.